So, Asalaamu Alaikum, how are you guys? So, this session is about uh, uh, .NET Core, cron job, Hangfire Hackathon, and we'll cover .NET Core, oh. Dependency Injection, uh, cron jobs in Hangfire, and GitHub Publishing. And in the end, uh, if you have any question, you can ask me, uh, or you can write in the chat window. So let's get uh, started. Uh, for this session, you would need uh, Visual Studio and uh, Visual Studio installed on your local. And also uh, you would need uh, uh, .NET Core. So uh, .NET Core uh, is open source, uh, cross-platform and uh, high performance platform, you know, that allows you to build modern uh, internet connected cloud enabled application uh, uh, as we know previously uh, .NET used to be uh, platform dependent but with uh, with the help of .NET core you can uh, deploy applications and work on linux and mac os as well so you can build web apps uh, iot apps services and mobile backends it runs on .NET core and you can do development on linux um, Windows and Mac OS. So uh, you can deploy your code on cloud or on premises uh, on the applications. So benefit of that is uh, it's cross platform. So you can deploy it on any OS and it's open source and uh, it's a unified uh, platform to develop web UI and services. And uh, it has built in uh, dependency injection. <clears throat> which I'll show you in the code. Uh, it used to be like uh, we have to install some packages for dependency injection, but in .NET Core, it's built in. And uh, you have the ability to deploy uh, your server on IAS or Crystal, Docker or Apache. Uh, and it's lightweight and high performance. Uh, and it includes modern HTTP request pipeline, and uh, it's well uh, suited architecture for testability. Um, and you can integrate other frameworks like Angular or React or Blazor um, with .NET Core apps. Okay, so let's start uh, with your Studio. So if you like, you can uh, turn on your Visual Studio and do what I'm doing, or you can just watch and note down what I'm doing and you can do it on your local. Uh, sorry, before we start, just have a yeah. uh, small question. Yeah. So just wondering, so can we deploy applications like on Azure and AWS with this? Yeah, yeah, you can deploy it on Azure or AWS. Yeah, no problem. So any cloud platform you can deploy cool thank you yeah yeah okay so we need to first uh, create a new app so for that i'll select here web so i'll create uh, .NET core web app click next and uh, Folder, maybe I can say uh, this folder, and uh, here I can create uh, uh, IPIP uh, and file app. Maybe I'll put this capital. And in here, project name, I can say uh, Hangfire app. So, uh, as we are in Visual Studio 2019, so it has 
.NET Core 3.1 support. And as we know, recently .NET 6 has launched, so which only work on Visual Studio 2020. I also have this, but with this, you don't need .NET Core. Uh, .NET Core is already included in that. So if you are using latest version, uh, you can select here .NET 6. That would be enough. And uh, yeah, rest of the stuff is fine. <clears throat> okay, so the app is created and uh, we have uh, startup file, uh, program file, whenever the .NET uh, code is run, uh, it first run the program file and within program, uh, it runs the startup file. So we can configure our services and stuff here and uh, rest of the stuff we can put in, in the controllers and other files. <clears throat> so let's maybe build the solution and run it to see how it looks at the moment. So this is all boilerplate code you get whenever uh, you create a new app. All this code comes uh, with the app. So that's how uh, it looks at the moment. Nothing in that. Okay, so we have this uh, home privacy pages are here in the pages here, privacy. Home is coming uh, from the index page. Okay, so uh, I'll close this and <clears throat> uh, I'll install a new get package. Uh, we would need a couple of packages. <clears throat> so, I'm going to install hang fire <coughs> and uh, install this. And uh, after that, uh, yeah, this install, uh, I would need uh, one more. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll add uh, Swagger as well. Uh, maybe later if you get time, I will show you how we can configure Swagger. <clears throat> okay, so a couple of packages installed, and now uh, we can go to uh, our startup class. And uh, in here, uh, we can do like in the configure services here, you can configure the services that you have, uh, like razor pages. And uh, here you can do like you want to include uh, MVC or routing or any other things like uh, any new files or services you add, you can you have to register it here. So uh, in here we can add uh, stuff like related to hang fire. So actually, uh, the cron jobs uh, in hang fire, cron jobs uh, actual purpose is 
uh, when you run the app on server uh, or on cloud, it works uh, straight away. You have a web page or something, and you wanted something to run on a specific time or after interval. So these cron jobs kick in and it, it does the purpose. Like uh, you wanted something to be fired straight away, straight away after the request, or you want it to be something to fire after half an hour, every half an hour, or every minute, or every day at some specific time. So you can configure the cron jobs, and uh, your app is running, and it would, you know, fire the stuff on a specific time. So this can be useful in maybe uh, email marketing or any other purpose uh, you want to achieve. Uh, and you are not doing manually, it's automatically doing stuff for you on specific time, like every day or every week. So yeah, so here we can uh, configure this. Uh, hang file by doing this and we'll use uh, SQL storage and uh, here we can provide the connection string of SQL server. So for that uh, we would need to maybe uh, create a database. Uh, because this need one database. So if you want to connect locally, so if I put just start, it means I'm connected. I'm trying to connect local, or you can put local host here. Okay, so um, yeah, I can create a new database called uh, our project name is Hangfire IP app. So I can call it uh, Hang. Uh, I pip and file db. Okay, so this db is created, uh, and uh, in here, uh, I need to provide the connection string so we can say our server is. Uh, localhost and initial catalog is this our db name uh, and user id uh, is my user id there which one i have yes dev user so and uh, my password uh, yeah, I can. If you have a user, then you need to create one user in SQL Server. Or if you have any user, you can put your ID password there. So that uh, it means uh, um, your user should have the mapping with this new database. So, like I have this user. So, you can go in here to see what database this user can view. So, it has this IPIP and FireDB. So this has uh, access to this DB, so that's fine. And uh, you can say here, add uh, on fire server. So this will add the server and uh, in the configure, um, we can add here app.use and fire dashboard. Uh, and uh, here we can do map razor pages or we can do uh, maybe map uh, controllers. Okay, um, that's all. And uh, after that, uh, maybe. Uh, we have the DB created here. And uh, um, now I'll maybe create a, 
a new project here uh, in which we can create our service. So add new project and uh, I can maybe go here console. library class library project i can create and i can name it uh, uh, and fire service or maybe uh, i can call it personal service so this is kind of like uh, you have a separate service uh, which is uh, doing something uh, which will be connected to uh, this Hangfar app. <clears throat> so in here, uh, maybe I'll delete this file. We can create a interface. Uh, we can name it, uh, um my uh, we call it we start with i for interface my uh, service and uh, in here uh, we can make it public and uh, we can have one function here which uh, maybe run my task Okay, and uh, now we can create here one class. And we can call it uh, my personal service. So we specify as public and uh, we can uh, extend that with the with our interface that we created and uh, it's complaining about missing members so so when i click uh, it implement whatever member it had so in this one uh, uh, here we can say like uh, uh, maybe we can do this console dot right line and you can say this task is uh, run from my personal service okay uh, and uh, yeah that's it so if i save it and uh, yeah, I need to create a controller here now so that uh, uh, I can uh, call this service from this project. So first I need to uh, register this service in here. So in startup, we can add it uh, as I mentioned about uh, dependency injection. <clears throat> so in .NET Core, you can do like uh, a scoped uh, way of doing it, or uh, you can do it like a singleton or, or you can do transient. So in here, uh, we can, we can add it like uh, we'll add it here dot add scoped so you can add it uh, you can do a dependency injection via this way uh, Uh, this way uh, is kind of like uh, when you 
when you're doing scoped, it means uh, it will be your your service or your class will be available uh, throughout your request when you will do the when you request for the web page or endpoint. So if you do uh, add uh, singleton, uh, it means the only the at first time the object will be created and the and the instance of that will be uh, used uh, throughout. And uh, if I do transient, uh, this means uh, it's like when you are in a class and you create an object with a new operator. Uh, so it has a bit of lifetime whenever um, you can use it and you can dispose it off. So it has uh, it's it works like uh, that kind of approach where you create object with a new operator so here uh, we can create it uh, we can do dependency injection by using add scope so so in here we can provide our service interface so i my personal service and uh, my personal okay so i'll make it bigger it doesn't like it so reference the project so when i click this so this project will be referenced here so yeah, this got referenced. And uh, now it knows about this, that this is coming from here, this is the interface, and uh, this is the class, uh, which is this one. So this should be like this. Okay, so <clears throat> once uh, we add uh, our service uh, interface and class here, uh, by doing the dependency injection. So it means whenever we create a controller or any other class, we need to inject this uh, interface in the constructor and it will be available uh, uh, in the class. So we can do unit testing. Uh, it's easy to do it uh, once we have the dependency injected uh, and you can perform any other operations. Uh, without the hassle of uh, creating the object every time new time uh, new. okay so now maybe we can create uh, a controller here uh, a folder maybe called controllers and uh, inside this uh, i can maybe call it um, and fire controller, and we'll see empty controller. So I can name it uh, and fire. Okay, so this created, uh, so it has um, these base classes you can extend, so it has already. Uh, so much uh, functionality related to your controller there so you can use it uh, and uh, in here uh, first we need to create constructor so public base and that's a constructor created and uh, this is our uh, one index action within the controller so we can maybe give it like a root where it should be accessible so we can say hang file and within that uh, we need to call this function here uh, from this controller so first we need to inject the dependency uh, that we added here. 
So we need to maybe bring it here and say, <clears throat> we need to create object first. So I'm going to read on the import my personal service. And uh, we need to inject this dependency in the constructor. And uh, assign this. So now our object this is available throughout the class, or we can create any other class like this. We need to inject in the constructor this dependency. It will be available throughout. So that's um, with the dependency injection, you can achieve this. Okay, so now you can do this dot run my task. So you can see here, uh, it's complaining, you can say, okay. So whenever this endpoint is fired, it will go into this service and it will run this run my task, uh, which has uh, this. Okay, so well, I'll build everything and then run. <clears throat> Okay, so run as thing for app. So when I run this, works fine. And uh, when I open up, I'll put it here at the corner. And I'll put a breakpoint here. So when I'll go to that endpoint, we mentioned API slash hangfire. So it should so it's it's hitting that. So you can see your debugger is working okay. So when I click this, so it's it run this this task is run from my personal service. So whenever I hit again, it is hitting there. So it means it works fine. So we are getting this message now. Okay, so uh, uh, maybe uh, we can add uh, date time or something to see we are getting uh, a date here as well. Um, date time dot now dot. Um, so spring here I can mention uh, and uh, by the way, all minutes, seconds. Okay, so if I save it and run again. <clears throat> yeah, it's running and uh, open this and I will go to API slash hang file. So it shows this message with the uh, timestamp. So as I'm refreshing, yeah, it's changing. Okay, so this works fine. And now maybe I'll close this and uh, open up. Uh, so as you can see here in startup, we added 
uh, hang fire with our db connection uh, so if you go to our db uh, we refresh this so you can see the extra hang fire tables are automatically created uh, so we'll get the benefit of this uh, and i'll show you what more we can do now uh, so uh, let's go to our controller and in here whenever this endpoint was hitting we were calling this run my task and it was showing this message with the timestamp so uh, now we can do something like uh, we can comment out this and here we can do a recurring job dot add or update and we can say uh, maybe uh, ipip uh, test job uh, one and uh, this is the name of job and in the second parameter it says we need to provide method and third the uh, time interval so first we put the string job name so the second one can be uh this dot my personal service dot run my task and uh, in the last parameter we can specify time you can say like uh, add some minutes or you can do like cron dot daily it will run daily uh, or hourly or minutely monthly weekly or yearly so we can say minutely uh, so every minute uh, we'll see this <clears throat> okay so we can have a breakpoint here and we can minimize this it here and uh, i can save all build and run Okay, so that's running. Uh, and now, instead of if we go to uh, API hang file, You can directly go to the uh, Hangfire dashboard. As you can see, the breakpoints are hitting. So we can go here, Hangfire. So here we have a nice Hangfire dashboard. Uh, so I'll bring this down here. Here we can see our servers that which is this one is just started. These I already started a few minutes ago when our DB was created. So here you can see recurring jobs. Uh, like we created here a recurring job here. And uh, it's minutely. So when I click here, it shows this recurring job name that we created i pip test job one so you can see it's coming here every minute breakpoint hit automatically so here you will see a scheduled job what jobs are processing what succeeded any failures deleted or waited or something in the queue so when i click here so two run jobs have already succeeded uh so when i click on this this will uh, tell you what time what duration it took and what it did uh, so if i go here so you can see your job run successfully and it shows the time uh, so we are not uh, firing any uh, endpoint or link it is working automatically at the moment 
So after maybe a few seconds, this uh, endpoint will hit and you'll see the debugger here. You can see here. Uh, so when I click continue, uh, we get here the third message. So if I go here, you can see a few seconds ago, this job fired. So this way you can uh, maybe create uh, jobs that can run um, uh, minutely, or you can do it like yearly, weekly, or every day, or at some specific time, like uh, you're doing something uh and on every day at 5 p.m something need to be fired some emails need to be sent so this may be your email service and here you are doing like firing emails and every time uh, like lunchtime or evening is firing the emails for you or sending the documents to somewhere so this is your personal service this can be anything like an email service or anything so you see here it's hitting the endpoint so every minute it's hitting. Uh, so you can see here and you can, uh, with the dashboard, you can do something like a manual thing as well. Like you can, any job you can click and you can in queue. So this will fire straight away here. You can get, you get message. Uh, so I'll bring this up. So here you can see here. I just run it at 48 and I click here and in queue, I got the breakpoint. So it just, I run this. So you can do it manually as well. And um, you can also see the dashboard and see how many jobs are running. So you can create uh, more than one or you can create it uh, in the startup and that uh, you don't need controller, it can, work in a startup as well. So as you can see, uh, these are working fine. And uh, you can also uh, change the status of it in the database so that uh, it can uh, work straight away. Uh, if you change the fields, like if you go in this D, uh, table, you can see your uh, data here these jobs have succeeded and uh, you can go to this table to see their state like their processing their in queue what time and stuff and these are triggered by the scheduler so all of these updates you can see triggered by dashboard ui uh, updates you can see here so yeah so I added minutely because uh, it should fire and we can see it straight away here. Uh, but uh, you can put here like uh, yearly or something. So if you do it uh, weekly, then you need to wait a week or you can do daily. But if your uh, app is working perfectly on minutely, uh, then you can do the other stuff like daily and other things and you need to keep your app running uh, like your server is running here and uh, with the dashboard you can control and you can uh, in queue your job again anytime you do it manually and you'll have a full dashboard of uh, uh, all your jobs here uh, like i created uh, uh, this one called i could test job one so you'll have all the jobs here, so you can uh, click on it and trigger now, or you can delete it. Uh, and you can go in each one to see uh, how many of that is fired. So like here, seven times it is fired, uh, and you can do manual and stuff. Okay, <clears throat> so let's uh, maybe, uh, push this app on uh, uh, GitHub. So let me log into my GitHub.
Okay, so there's mine and I have some apps here. So I need to create a new one and I call it, uh, okay, uh, oh, this is running. I need to remove the breakpoint. So I'll keep that going. So app name was Hangfire IPIP app. Hangfire I app and uh, description for water core and file public add a readme file create repository <clears throat> so this created my repository uh this is a repository link so So now I need to open up command prompt. Uh, and in here, as you can see, this is doing the job in the background. Nine of them run so far. Okay, so what we're gonna do, uh, <clears throat> we have to go to that folder where our project is. So this is uh, in this, Folder. Okay, so and in here is IP Hangfire app. Yeah. So yeah, it has these two personal service and this. So in here we need to do you need to make sure you have a Git installed. So you can install Git from online. You can search on Google. Uh, after that, uh, you will be able to publish on GitHub. And then you can go to github.com, create an account. And then as I created new repository, just create new repository. This will give you a new link. And then just copy that link and go to the folder where the, where the project is. And you can do git init here. And here you can do git remote add origin. And you put your repository link that you have created. And then you do git fetch. And so it does the fetch. And then you do git pull. This will pull whatever you have so with the fetch whatever remote repository you have it will fetch and pull whatever latest related to already fetched one so now you can do git add dot so this will add files to staging and prepare for the commit okay and now we can do git commit um, and we can do initial commit of our project. We can put a message. So this added all of the files. And after commit, we need to do git push new origin master to the master branch. Okay. Okay, should be origin. O R G I N. Okay, I got this pop up. Uh, sign in with the browser. Hello. Okay, there's added. You'll get this pop up too. So that's added there. Uh, now, if I go to my repository on GitHub and click refresh, uh, I'll see here. 
most uh, recent push is less than a minute ago. Okay. Maybe I'll we'll see what the file folder structure has. Maybe I'll commit one file. This is my folder. It looks like you have two branches there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll put something here at the end. Save it and uh, stop it and uh, from here I'll commit. So if you have dot twice git, you can commit it from here as well. Getting some errors and save it by by someone else. Um, git config here. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, some tortoise get related errors I'm getting. Anyway, if not... you will go to your commit uh, git it's itself, mm -hmm. there are two branches created. What are the two branches? See this main two branches. Yeah, so click on this initial commit. This one. No, your name, initial commit. Yeah. Yeah. This is the uh, first time we created the repo. So I'm looking for the one which had, which put all of these files. So click on branches. So you have two branches there. Hmm. Next one. Branch your master, yeah. There it is. Yeah, I was on the main one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in master, yeah, we have this initial commit. So we have our two personal service here and hang fire app, and we have our controller and everything. Okay, good. So we can see our commit. Uh, and uh, I, was I was about to try and add something to the commit, but for some reason I can't do it through Torta, I guess. Maybe I need to do it um, uh, through maybe local. Uh, we can do it, commit, get add, and delete. My changes. And uh, hit push. Yeah, so this has added. So now I'll refresh. my changes yeah so my changes are already here so you can click on it you can see i added this which is here okay so github work fine uh, and uh, we created the repository and commit went okay and uh, you can do uh, github you can deploy your app as well uh, there is a process of doing it. Uh, we have already explained it uh, in our um, uh, in our React session. So if you see the React session, I showed 
how to create a React app and uh, how you can you know, create repository and how you can deploy it as well. So if you want to deploy, uh, you can follow this one. Uh, maybe quickly, uh, I can show you uh, uh, a Swagger. Uh, so for Swagger, uh, uh, which is very good uh, for testing purposes, so if I go and click here, okay. Yeah, if I install this, So in our startup, so here we can uh, have a code already. I can put it here. So Swagger, you can put this code here. Uh, and um, in your configure services, uh, here you can put uh, this code, this one piece of code here uh, about what you're adding and also some code here related to your Swagger and your Swagger UI. And after that in your controller, uh, make sure you have uh, like uh, HTTP controllers like uh, HTTP get uh and uh, you have other words like uh, post uh, put delete so let's call it http get and uh, when we do this and uh, i clean and rebuild just a few minutes remaining we are almost one hour we started a bit late okay so hmm. unable to resolve unable to resolve slash perfect okay why it's not able to resolve? Okay, so this is working, yeah. So once you have your settings right, uh, you go here uh, and uh, like here, you you just on your API, like here, I clicked uh, hang file. You have your dashboard open. So you just click on Swagger, that's it. So when you run this, this kind of uh, page will open up this will show you uh, your function uh, where you added http get so it will show you this and uh, uh, in here uh, you will have uh, option to maybe click on post uh, and uh, you can do put body or something and uh, you can fire so once you click fire you'll get the breakpoint here and you can do it manually. So, but we already have a hang fire running. And as you can see, it's firing the events. So you can do that uh, manually as well. Like you go here, your server is running. And this is one that we created. Uh, and you click to see how many jobs succeeded. 
so this one just running yeah as you can do manually here like uh, you wanted uh, the first one to run again so you you enqueue that so as you can see it run so you can run like five of them together or these all together as you can see so so it will run minutely as we added here minutely so that's all it is um, uh, any question you have uh, let me know uh, and uh, there are a couple of links uh, related to hang fire which are useful uh, i'll show you that uh, one is this you can note down here uh, you can go it will tell you how to get started like we did and uh, how to configure and uh, in background methods uh, you can fire emails and uh, it will tell you uh, how call method in the background like you can do a background job uh, and you can do methods in delay like uh, after maybe in minutes you can say 10 or 20 so after 20 minutes uh, it will run it uh, instead of per minute here so uh yeah and other things are you can do recurrent jobs like daily or you can in the last parameter you can say like a timestamp like divided by two or something some calculation you can add and it will run according to your time calculation so uh, 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 Ikram, the, yeah. the use case is if I'm going to send the everyday morning 8 a.m. email yeah. to uh, a specific set of clients, is it? Yeah, yeah. Emails you want to send or um, in your service, the service can be doing anything, any big stuff. It will do that. Like it's performing my like 20 different operations, sending files from here to there. To different servers so you can see here uh, in this jobs recurring jobs you will have a job created and you will see what your job is doing it and uh, if it is running every day at a specific time uh, you will see it's processing if it is taking time you'll see it here if it is failed it comes here you can see the problem error log everything comes here and in succeed you can see what it does you know and you can go in air to see how long it took, what servers used and worker and stuff. And we can we can connect with any any database. We can run on any rule, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can run your rule, and uh, you can manually use the same job again. So it's very useful. Uh, where companies, uh, you know, wanted to do something automatic, you know like uh, every day to perform some operation or manual so they can have a dashboard uh, like it used to be in ecrons there used to be no dashboard so in the background one service is running and it's doing something you know mm -hmm. and only a developer would be able to see what it is doing so here you can see what they are doing any problem processing uh, you know any fail or something so you can go in the failed one and see what's really in the problem and then you can go in the code to see why it's a failure or something so you can perform any operation here i just send one message so it can be email it can be anything very good yeah so that's uh, the thing you can achieve from ecrons and with this uh, hang fire dashboard I have uh, one use case. Definitely, I will be talking to you mm -hmm. to just send some some files and some documents. On yeah, yeah, yeah. I can help uh, if 
anybody has any other question, you can put it in chat or you can ask. And uh, uh, here you can uh, note down this repository link, which I made it public. So if you like uh, the, the code of this, so I'll just send it in chat window. So you can go there and, uh, and you can uh, download the code by doing git fetch git pull by copying this repo. So you'll get all of the code that uh, we published. So everything you will get and it will run straight away if you have uh, .NET and .NET Core uh, 3 plus or if you have latest .NET 6. Okay, so uh, yeah, in database, yeah, we can see it's all running okay. So any other question? No, I think uh, we can close it off here. Uh, I'm gonna stop recording now. And attending this session, uh, I hope you have learned about uh, .NET Core, uh, dependency injection, cron jobs in Hangfire, and uh, GitHub Publisher. Uh, cron jobs in Hangfire in any application. You have any service running, doing anything, you can connect your service with this, and you'll have dashboard and jobs running in background. Okay, um, so that's all. So thank you very much, everyone. And we'll have the recording available on YouTube. Thanks.